Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and today we're checking out LG's 27-inch 27UD88 4K monitor. Now the neat thing here is that this is a USB-C monitor, which makes it a great solution for the 12-inch MacBook. So this both charges, connects external peripherals, and allows you to output 4K video all with one cable. Now although the focus of this video will be on the MacBook, of course this is a universal monitor, so this can be used with HDMI or DisplayPort for any Windows or Mac machine. So cracking into the box first thing we'll see in the upper left corner is our power supply so this does come with an external power supply so you do get this big brick which you'll have to hide somewhere and then we get our accessory packet that includes a USB-C cable uh, which is what you'll need to connect the MacBook to the monitor the USB-C cable that comes with your MacBook only supports charging it doesn't support display output we'll also find a USB-C to USB-A cable and a HDMI and display port cable we also get some paperwork and a CD-ROM we haven't seen those in a while so this does contain the drivers and user manual. We also get LG's display quality assurance report, which gives us the exact calibration for this monitor. And we'll find some handling instructions on how to take this out of the box. We'll also find this little white plastic piece. This is part of the cable management system, which snaps on the back. Next up, we have the curved base for the stand. Now the base is weighted with metal on the back, so you'll see that, but the top piece is plastic with this brushed finish. It's really nice looking, although the display itself isn't curved. Next up, let's remove the first tray. And on the bottom, we'll see that the monitor is sitting on the bottom and on the right side we'll find the armature or the stand. This is a telescoping stand that allows the monitor to be rotated. It's really easy to install but first we'll have to remove all of the plastic so it's covered in lots of plastic and again it's an all plastic uh, monitor stand and it's got this nice white glossy finish which matches the back of the monitor. So next up we have the monitor itself. So we're going to go ahead and lift it out of the box so we can unwrap it. Now once I get it out of the envelope I want to rest it on the styrofoam shell so I don't scratch the front of the display. Now we still have lots of plastic on the back which we can peel off and then we're ready to go. Now next up we need to assemble the stand. So all I have to do to attach the base of the stand is to use these toggle screws which screw in so no tools are needed. And next up all we have to do is connect the stand to the back of the monitor and it just slots in and snaps into place. Now if you need to free this up there is a little switch just below the stand mount that allows you to pop it out. So in terms of design, I think this is a really good looking display. We have a very thin bezel around the sides, a thicker bezel toward the bottom, but the display is virtually edge to edge. It's even more impressive when the display is off because it's basically just a black slab in front of you. So it's a really good looking monitor. Now in terms of the design on the back, it's all white plastic. It looks really nice from the back. So if you have to look at the back of it, this is definitely a good looking monitor. Now along the sides of the monitor, you have the same metallic plastic finish that's also on the stand. It's really nice looking. It really brightens it up and makes it look a little more pretty. Premium. Now in terms of the monitor stand, it's really nicely designed. So it's really easy and smooth to operate. So you can raise and lower the monitor with very little effort. You can also pitch the monitor down slightly and pitch it back quite a bit. So whatever position you want, you probably are gonna be able to find it with this monitor. And you can also rotate this a full 90 degrees. This allows you to get that vertical monitor if you need it in some situations. In terms of our inputs and outputs, we have two HDMI 2.0 ports. We have a display port version 1.2. We also have two USB 3.0 ports and they are capable of quick charge. So it does support quick charge, but you do need to enable this under settings. And of course we have a single USB type C port, which does support ultra high definition at 60 Hertz. Now in terms of panel specifications, this is a 27 inch IPS widescreen monitor. So 16 by nine uh, with an sRGB color spectrum of around 99%. So this is a highly accurate monitor, which is great for photo editors or video editors. We have a five millisecond response time at a 60 Hertz refresh rate. And of course we have a resolution of 3840 by 2160, a standard 4K resolution. We also have a contrast ratio of five million to one. So we have a nice deep black level on this monitor and we have wide viewing angles at around 178 degrees. So in the end, this is a fantastic looking display. We have a nice even backlight, so it's not splotchy. It's got a nice deep black level and colors really pop on this monitor. So in terms of using this monitor with a MacBook, all you have to do is connect a single USB-C cable, the one that came included. This charges the MacBook and allows you to output full 4K resolution from the MacBook to the monitor. Now, of course, you can either mirror the MacBook to the monitor and just close your Mac, or you can use both the MacBook and the monitor at the same time as a second display. And all that you can configure under display settings. Now, you do have to keep in mind, unfortunately, that the MacBook natively 
only outputs 4K at 30 hertz. Now, for the most part, 30 hertz isn't so bad. Obviously, this is gonna be an issue when movement is involved because we have less frames. Ideally, we would be at 60 hertz, but the MacBook doesn't support it. So this may be an issue for things like uh, gaming. So if you plan to do a lot of gaming on your MacBook, this might be an issue for you. But it's definitely not a big deal if you're web browsing, watching video, which is usually under 30 frames per second. But of course, there is a hack that allows you to enable 60 hertz on the MacBook, and apparently it works pretty well. Now, if you want to find out how to do this, Jeff Benjamin over at 9to5Mac did a great video on this, and I'll leave that linked in the description below. Now, one of the greatest advantages of connecting your MacBook to this monitor is that it now gives you access to additional ports you otherwise don't have. So you can connect peripherals like hard drives or a camera or even an audio system. Now, it's important to keep in mind that if you're using the USB Type-C port along the back for display output, it does dial back the USB 3.0 ports to USB 2.0 speeds. So that means you won't get those high-speed data transfers, but again, you have two USB ports, which you otherwise don't have. Now, for those who are worried about theft, there is a Kensington lock on the back, so this allows you to tie down the monitor so it doesn't walk away. Also on the back is an audio output jack, so this allows you to connect either your headphones or a set of speakers. Toward the bottom edge of the display, we'll find our single button on the entire display, so this acts as both the power on button and the joystick for navigating the on-screen display. It's also an LED status light, so it tells you when the display is turned on or not, and you can turn this off under settings. You also find lots of ventilation down here. Unfortunately, no speakers built in. Next up, I'm gonna take you through the on-screen interface, and we have this little joystick down below the LG logo, which has up, down, left, or right. And if you wanna access any one of these features, you just flick to that point. So for example, if I just want to exit this menu, I just click the center click. If I wanna power this off, I flick it toward myself, and that powers it off. Now, if you have a set of headphones connected or a set of speakers connected, you can adjust the volume using the joystick. So again, you just click left or right to adjust volume and bring the switch toward yourself to mute or unmute the volume. We can also quickly jump to our gaming mode. So if we go to game mode, we actually have several profiles we can pick from. So all you have to do is keep clicking up on that joystick and this will cycle through the available game modes. Next up, let's check out the menu and there's quite a few settings here, such as our quick settings for brightness, contrast, volume, input, and screen ratio. We also have our picture settings, such as the various picture modes and color profiles, such as custom reader, which dims things down, sRGB for standard calibration, color weakness, FPS game one, and all the game profiles we saw earlier we also have several picture adjustments such as Super Resolution Plus. This is a upscaling algorithm, so this is designed to improve upscaling uh, for this monitor. We also have sharpness settings in addition to DFC, which we can turn off. Uh, we have game adjust, so this allows us to change the response time to high, middle, low, or off. We can leave it there by default. We also have the black stabilizer, which we can adjust as well. We have our color adjust, so we can adjust the gamma, color temperature, the reds, blues, and greens, and then we have our six color adjustments, so you can see the various hues we can adjust, such as scion and green hues. We also have general settings such as our smart energy saving mode. Uh, so it's on by it's on low by default, but you can set it to high or off, and this will use an algorithm to conserve energy without noticeably dimming the display. We can also turn on the power LED light by the joystick. That's off by default, so if you want to see it illuminated, you can turn that on. We can also use automatic standby. I'm going to leave that off and let the uh, computer decide when to turn that off. And then we have display port 1.2, which we can enable, and then we have quick charge. So if you want to enable quick charge for the devices that support it, you can do so here, but you have to keep in mind that when you do that or when it's using Quick Charge 3.0, it actually disables the other USB ports. We also have the buzzer, so if you don't want that beep sound, you can turn that off and then you can lock the on-screen display. So in the end, this is a really high quality 4K monitor for most applications. And with a MacBook with USB Type-C, it becomes a really nice hub for an all-in-one solution. But it's not the perfect solution because we're limited to 30 hertz unless you want to hack it. And of course, those USB ports are sort of dialed back when you're using the USB Type-C connector. And since it lacks a set of internal speakers, you can't go completely one wire with the solution because you still need to connect either a set of headphones or speakers. But but as of right now, this is probably the best display for turning your 12-inch MacBook into a desktop computer. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this look at the 27UD88 27-inch 4K monitor from LG. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and I'll see you again in the next video.